Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, the family of a man who was shot and killed last year during what began as a mental health check is reacting to the latest body cam footage that they just received. The family of Damien Daniels, along with the family's attorney, held a news conference just a few moments ago. Tiffany Huertas joins us now live with more on that. Tiffany, what's the family demanding now? Ursula, the family wants the body cam footage to be released to the public. They say Sheriff Salazar's version of the events are inaccurate and are asking for his resignation and the deputy who shot Daniels be arrested. Now, 31-year-old Army War veteran Damian Daniels was shot and killed in August 2020 during what began as a mental health check. Sheriff Salazar says it happened during a struggle with deputies in front of Daniels' home. Daniels' family saw new body cam video and say there are many things they saw that just don't add up. All that we wanted was to see the truth so that we could expose the Bear County Sheriff's Office for their lack of transparency and for their lack of human life, especially regarding a service member who protected this country and, and did everything in his power to help others. The family's attorney says there should have been a mental health team present during the incident last year. So far, Sheriff Zalazar has released only still photos of the event of that incident. We have reached out to the Bear County Sheriff's Office to learn more about this case and where it stands and about that body cam footage, but we haven't heard back just yet. Back to you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Two children saved from drowning in the Guadalupe River yesterday near Seguin by a man and a woman who jumped in after them. But both those adults then went under. The woman didn't survive. The search continues this noon for that man. Sarah Costa has been covering this story all morning long as the search continued from the bridge over the river at FM 1117. Family and friends have started to gather by the Guadalupe River near the bridge as they wait for updates. Authorities have closed off access to the river as a new Braunfels dive team continues to search for that man along with surrounding first responding teams. The man who hasn't been identified by the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office, a father who was at the river with his three children Sunday evening. Two of his children got caught up in the river's current upstream from the FM 1117 bridge. He jumped in after them. 22 year old Cassandra Kendrick was with another group nearby and decided to jump in and help the man. The father of the children was able to reach both of them. He handed them off to Kendrick, who was able to safely get them to the riverbank. Then the sheriff's office says the man began to struggle under the water and the woman went back into the water after him. Around 5 p.m., a group of people near the water say they saw both the man and Kendrick go under the water and never resurface. A search then began for the two of them with the help of several surrounding authorities walking the river upstream, hoping the two were able to get to safety. Around 845 Sunday night, the sheriff's office says Kendrick's body was found by divers and she was pronounced dead on scene. At 10 p.m., first responders halted the search for the man. The search for that man started back up around 7 o'clock this morning, and the family of that father continues to wait for updates. From Guadalupe County, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Now this noon, the search is on as well for an accused bank robber on the west side. Police say that he threatened a teller, then ran off with the money. Take a look at the screen. Police want to find this person. Officers tell us that back in June, on June 10th, actually, he walked into a Wells Fargo in the 3000 block of West Woodlawn Avenue. That's near Bandera Road. Police say that the suspect pretended to be a customer. Eventually, he showed a teller a note and then demanded cash and threatened that he had a bomb on him. The teller handed over the money and the suspect ran off. Police also on the lookout for two people. According to officers, they're accused of stealing from a convenience store. These are the two there. The pair showed up at a 7-Eleven in the 12,000 block West Avenue on May 25th. Police say they grabbed several items and left without paying for any of it. And when a worker tried to confront them, one of the suspects threatened the clerk with a weapon. The two suspects took off in a, this blue pickup truck. If you have any information about either of these cases, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a cash reward if the information you provide leads to an arrest. It seems angry words have led to a nasty wound for one man. He is in the hospital after being shot during an argument at a Westside Hotel. As Katrina Weber reports, San Antonio police are still trying to find the shooter. 
to the Paradise Motel after eight last night initially left San Antonio police with more questions than answers. They found a 58 year old man here with a gunshot wound in his belly. But at that time, they didn't know who shot him or why. Police say a man armed with a gun was seen speeding off in a car. The victim was whisked away to a hospital by ambulance, although police say his wound was not life threatening. Officers, meanwhile, stayed here in the 4900 block of West Commerce looking for witnesses and clues. According to a police report, investigators were able to talk to some of the people here at the motel and they found out more about what happened, that the two men had been involved in an argument. But it seems they still haven't found the one who pulled the trigger. At some point after the shooting, police say the same car that carried away the shooter returned to the motel. However, they determined the person who was driving it then was not involved in the shooting at all. They continue to search for that gunman. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It was another weekend of gun violence in this country. So far, there have been 30 mass shootings in June alone, according to the Gun Violence Archive. ABC's Rita Roy explains there's growing concern that we could be entering a violent summer. Just halfway through the year, at least 270 mass shootings here in America, according to the Gun Violence Archive. In Austin, Saturday, 13 people hurt, some critically, and one dead when a gunman opened fire on a crowd, most innocent bystanders, according to police. Four rapid gunshots, pop, 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 pop. We just saw bodies everywhere. I hit the ground faster than I knew I could move. Police identifying the man who died as 25-year-old Douglas Cantor, his cousin saying he was on vacation there, outside a bar, waiting to get in when he was shot in the abdomen. I remember Douglas as a wonderful man. Um, cut down the short of life. He just got his master's. He had so much living to do. His life taken the same day 49 people were killed five years ago at the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando. Meantime in Chicago over the weekend, more than 40 people were wounded and several killed in separate shootings across the city. Three people dead and four others injured in Cleveland. A security guard shot during a mall robbery in Atlanta and two children critically hurt in a quadruple shooting in Cincinnati. Enough is enough. It's as basic as that. Our children are getting shot. Savannah, Georgia, also dealing with gun violence this weekend. One killed and at least seven others wounded, including a toddler. ABC News has spoken with at least five different police departments across the country to find out what they're doing to prevent more violence this summer. Most tell us they're investing in community policing strategies and targeting the most violent offenders to get a handle on things before they get even worse. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Another coronavirus vaccine showing potential. Novavax said its vaccine appears effective against COVID-19 in a large study. The study involved nearly 30,000 people in the U.S. and Mexico. The company says that preliminary data showed the vaccine was safe at 90% effective. Novavax said the vaccine appeared similarly effective against variants. It also protected against moderate and severe disease. Novavax plans to apply for emergency youth authorization in the U.S. and elsewhere within the next few months. Some 64 percent of U.S. adults have had at least one dose, while 54 percent are considered fully vaccinated. That is according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. New research says that the coronavirus spreads easier when it's cold, dry and not sunny. This research from Yale and Columbia universities shows cold, dry weather with low levels of ultraviolet radiation are moderately associated with increased COVID-19 spread. Researchers reviewed data from more than 2,600 counties in the United States over a nine month period to arrive at this conclusion. They found meteorological factors influenced about 17% of the virus's spread. The biggest factor at more than 9% was humidity. The results of the study published in the Nature Communications Journal. The tropics are heating up. We've got several systems now to watch. One in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll get you an update coming up. Another big win on the racetrack for a San Antonio racer. Highlights coming up in sports. Today is Flag Day, and it's also a local veteran's birthday. He shows us a flag that is special to him after the break. Today is a special day for the red, white, and blue. It is Flag Day. 
And also, it is the birthday of a local World War II and Korean War veteran who turns 99 years old today. Max Massey shows us the veteran R.W. Pratt was given a special flag. So that was the flag for the invasion of Okinawa. Meet R.W. World War II, and then I was recalled in the Korean War. Today is his 99th birthday, and thanks to Johnny Rosa and the Texas Treasures Fine Art Gallery and Frame Shop, this was his gift. Well, it was a grand surprise. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, it was <clears throat> it was our battle flag. We all know the American flag, red, white, and blue, but did you know that the colors have special significance? Blue is justice, perseverance, white, purity, red, hardiness, and valor. These colors mean so much to so many Americans, but for RW, it is especially important. The colors, they mean something. They you know, you show your colors. You know, we say that about football. We say that about basketball. Do you wear the colors? It's the same, only it's grand when it's your country. So show the colors. He last served in the Korean War, and now he serves as a mentor for men and women in our community. Our W is always stressed about having fun and have, have fun whatever you're doing. He brings fun to the table. He doesn't let you get down. He always encourages you. And so since I've met RW, uh, it's it's life it's life changing. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Awesome flag and thank him for his service on Flag Day. He looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm telling you. He's ready to go, isn't he? Yeah, and the pretty good looking day as well, but I don't like these temperatures. What's going on here? Uh, we're jumping into the 90s already at the noon hour. We're going to be up into the mid, even upper 90s in some cases today. We're hoping for a few showers though to cool us down. There are a few on the radar. I'll show you that here in just a second. The aquifer continues its drop down eight tenths of a foot to 669.5 and your pollen count. Nothing to worry about here. Molds are low. We'll talk about uh, the forecast in the tropics coming up. Driving down the highway on Saturday morning, it seemed like every other vehicle was pulling a boat, going, so, going somewhere. I, you know what I noticed? A lot of people stopping at the stores to pick up ice <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> over yeah, their ice yeah. chests. Yeah, we went to uh, SeaWorld Saturday. Uh -oh. A lot of people. Everyone's <laughs> getting back out. It's good to see, uh, and it's a good time of year to be out uh, you know, somewhere near the water because temperatures have been awful warm. Uh, we're in the 90s now. What we're watching here is the radar. And you can see we've got some showers up there across uh, parts of the uh, hill country, at least north of there along I-10 Sonora. We've had some showers. We had a few thunderstorms earlier around the San Angelo area. Those sort of fell apart, but there's still a little bit of a spin in the atmosphere right there as this sinks south. That could help to create a few showers and storms as we get into the afternoon for areas like Edwards County, Valverde County. Don't know that we'll see much here in San Antonio, but there's an outside chance of a pop-up shower or two. Here's a little closer look on I-10. There have been a few rumbles of thunder with this, too. A little outflow battery. So we'll see what that does. Uh, the computer models do want to develop some activity out there around Ozona, maybe Del Rio. This is around 4 o'clock this afternoon. And it does spark off one little storm here around San Antonio. We'll see. I'm not too convinced of that. But I think as we get into tomorrow, there's maybe a little better chance of some isolated showers and storms. It's not going to be widespread. We're not expecting severe weather, but at least a little bit of cloud cover, maybe a, a quick downpour could help cool us down a little bit. Right now, we're looking at uh, mostly sunny skies at the airport, 90 degrees, but look at that number at Stenson, 95. 91 Kelly, 91 Randolph. And uh, you can see some of the cloud cover that has developed just within the last couple of hours. Uh, these clouds really aren't going vertical here in San Antonio to help produce showers or storms, but a little bit of added cloud cover helps. 91 Port S.A. and 95 stints and 94 New Braunfels, 90 Kennedy, and we're at 94 out in Del Rio. Two points, still in the 70s, still it is humid, and so we have a heat index of 103 right now in Gonzales. Feels like 96 here in San Antonio, 99 in Kennedy, 98 in Hondo. I do think 
those dew points will start to come down a little bit as we get towards the weekend. Forecast heat index today is going to be up around 100, if not a little bit higher here in San Antonio, 104 Pleasanton, and you'll see triple digits around the area for that feels like number. OK, let's talk tropics now. It's getting a little busy out there. Hurricane Center now watching three areas. We're only in June and things seem to be heating up quickly. You know, it's interesting. This uh, system just off the coast of Africa, this is Africa here. This is way out there and to see development this time of year that far out there is pretty impressive. But the 20 percent chance over the next five days, Hurricane Center will watch that. Meantime, we have tropical depression number two, which is developed off the coast of the Carolinas. And then we have this system, which is in the Gulf of Mexico, still very disorganized, a broad area of low pressure. But the Hurricane Center thinks there's about a 60 percent chance of development. The computer models have been pretty consistent in developing something and taking it north. They've also been consistent on taking a lot of that moisture and pushing it east of our area. You look at the moisture in the atmosphere and this computer model shows that these orange colors represent deep moisture. This blue color represents dry air. Notice where we are on the dry side of things. This would bring rain to Louisiana if this uh, forecast holds and that system moved north and then pushing into Mississippi and Alabama, we would miss out completely on the rain. With all that being said, these systems tend to have a mind of their own and until we get a center of circulation, we're not going to be 100% confident that this will be the outcome, but that's the way it's looking right now. So we're going to keep things dry going into the weekend. Uh, names, uh, if we get that system off the Carolinas named, it would be Bill. And so if this system in the Gulf got named, it would be Claudette, if you're curious. But we're off to a busy start here in the uh, tropics. Here's what our forecast looks like next couple days. 20% chance rain Monday, Tuesday, uh, 95, 94, 93 on Wednesday. And then it does look like things dry out for the weekend. We'll keep that forecast again dry for now, but we'll keep you posted if anything changes, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Another NBA playoff series has come to an end. And San Antonio FC not exactly losing, but they're not exactly winning either these days. We'll explain coming up. It was another great weekend for a patio award. Once again, the winner's circle was his after a great final push at the Detroit Grand Prix. Joseph Newgarden led most of the back half of the race. He pitched for a tire change with 15 laps to go, but with 11 laps left, Roman Grossman has a fire on his left front light, and that forced him to stop on the track, bringing out the caution. He runs over to nearby course workers, gets a fire extinguisher, and put it out himself. When the race resumed, Award was running fifth. He methodically weaved his way through the remainder of the field, and he passes Newgarden with two laps to go to actually touch tires. But Award stays on line. You can get behind the wheel and watch here they come. And look at a little smoke come up right there. Ooh! From there, he cruises to victory, winning by nearly seven full seconds. Award becomes the first repeat winner of the NTT IndyCar season. And look what he does afterward, dive into the fountain to celebrate a very well-earned victory. I've had such a great car all weekend. Uh, today it was my fault that, that we uh, made it a little extra hard on ourselves starting from the back. But I knew I had a great car under me. I need to thank Aero Electronics, Views, Auto McLaren SP, Mission, Team Chevy, man. I mean, this is a Team Chevy territory. Uh, I'm so excited, so pumped to get them this. What a great way to celebrate, huh? Hey, the sun has set on the Denver Nuggets. Phoenix closing out the Nuggets for their four-game sweep. Denver Devin Booker was all Phoenix needed in the first half. He couldn't be stopped. He had 21 at halftime. Suns were up 63-55 in the third quarter. It was Chris Paul's turn, 12 points, 6-6 six six shooting. Suns' largest lead of the game grew up to 16. Tempers flared for the Nuggets, though. This year's MVP, Nikola Jokic, took a hard swing at Cameron Payne, trying to knock the ball loose. Instead, he gets Payne's face and go down. Then you see this. Jokic gets flagrant foul number two. It's some guys got face-to-face. -face. Most valuable player season ends just like that. Late fourth quarter, CP3 after the steal gets the jumper. He scored a season high 37. DeAndre Ayton puts the cherry on top. Ooh, that was a big slam. Suns win at 125-118. They sweep the Nuggets. All right, so here's a look. At the West Series, the Jazz and the Clippers game four coming up tonight at 9 o'clock. Jazz up 2-1 in that series, and then the Suns sweep the Nuggets 4 nothing. And in the Eastern Conference, it's the Sixers and the Hawks game four. Their series coming up this evening at 6.30. The Sixers are up 2-1, and the next Nets and Bucks play game five tomorrow night, 7.30. That series is all tied up at 2.
San Antonio FC on a roll. It's not good, but it's not bad. Three straight games, three straight ties for San Antonio FC. They now sit in fourth in the USL Western Conference standings without Ford Santiago Patino. San Antonio still took the lead in the ninth minute on Joaquin Varela's first goal of the season. That's the second time this year that SAFC has taken the lead in the first 10 minutes of play. Unfortunately, a late penalty kick forced him to settle for a tie. So here's the schedule as it continues at New Mexico United. That's coming up Wednesday, and then they are back home on Saturday to take on Rio Grande Valley FC. So actually a couple games this week. So there you go. Maybe they can get a win instead of that tie thing. I know they're going to get hot playing. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. All Good right. Good workout, though. Blood banks asking people to set up and donate. Why they say supply levels remain critically low, though, coming up in our next half hour. Another record-breaking weekend for air travel. A look at the number TSA is reporting coming up after the break. A president Joe Biden's first foreign trip since taking office, continuing with NATO members in Brussels today. The president is meeting with leaders of the alliance after he visited Queen Elizabeth on Sunday. And as ABC's Elizabeth Schulze tells us, his much anticipated summit with President Vladimir Putin comes later this week. In his first NATO summit as commander in chief, President Biden is recommitting the U.S. to the military alliance. NATO is critically important for U.S. interest in and of itself. The head of NATO calling it a pivotal time in the relationship between North America and Europe after four years of criticism by former President Trump, whose administration praised autocratic leaders in China, North Korea and Russia. We will open a new chapter in our transatlantic relationship with the meeting today. On the agenda in Brussels, China, climate change, the U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, and recent cyber attacks linked to Russia. We have uh, Russia that is not acting in a way that is consistent with what we had hoped, and uh, as well as China. The president also met with leaders of Baltic countries ahead of his highly anticipated face-to-face -face Wednesday with Russian President Vladimir Putin. G7 leaders are in disagreement about how tough to be on China, but they did agree during their summit in England over the weekend to call on China to respect human rights, and they agreed to donate 1 billion COVID vaccines to poorer nations, the U.S. providing half of that total. The president and first lady also met Sunday with Queen Elizabeth at Windsor Castle. Biden is now the fifth U.S. president the queen has hosted at the historic site. She reminded me of my mother in terms of the, the look of her and the, you know, just the generosity. A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds 52 percent of Americans trust President Biden to negotiate on the country's behalf with world leaders. Forty nine percent trust him to negotiate with President Putin. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. An FDA memo outlining how an estimated 75 million doses of Johnson & Johnson's vaccine were rendered unusable. It was due to quality control issues at a facility in Baltimore. In February, the FDA rejected an estimated 60 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine. Then in March, the, United, the, the, rather the New York Times reported that another 50 million vaccine doses were ruined by quality control issues identified by Johnson & Johnson. As of last week, the FDA has now approved 10 million doses of the single-dose vaccine from the facility as being safe to use. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson expected to announce some delays in England's reopening today. This comes as the Delta COVID variant continues to spread in the UK. It is at least 60 percent more contagious than previous strains. The government was originally expected to lift its remaining COVID restrictions on June 21st, a day some British media outlets have dubbed Freedom Day. Going overseas now to Israel, where the long reign of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu came to an end on Sunday. The country's longest serving leader ousted by an unlikely coalition. ABC's foreign correspondent Ian Panel has the latest. 
A new political dawn breaking over Israel today, the first in 12 years when Netanyahu is not prime minister. He was the country's longest serving leader, a close ally of the United States, but an unwilling partner for peace. But by just one vote, he was cast out by parliament. He's been replaced by this slightly unwieldy coalition that's going to be led by two prime ministers, each serving two years. The first, Naftali Bennett, is even more hardline than Netanyahu, but for now, he's calling for ideological restraints. But there's not much sign of that at protest, calling him a traitor. The Palestinians reacting dismissively, but remember, this comes on the back of that bloody war between Israel and Hamas. But it was Netanyahu's ongoing trial for corruption and bribery that appears to have been his final undoing. Don't expect any change in relations with America, though. President Biden won the first to congratulate the new prime minister, saying he's looking forward to strengthening all aspects of what he's calling the close and enduring relationship between our two nations. Ian Panel, ABC News, London. Back here in the States, a record weekend for airports. The Transportation Security Administration says it's screened more than 2 million people on Friday and more than 2 million again on Sunday. It's the first time screenings were above the 2 million mark since the pandemic started in March of 2020. The numbers will likely grow as Americans fly this summer to visit family or go on vacation. Airlines say business travel has not yet recovered, though. Looking outside with live cam, we are going to be ducking for clouds. Looking for the clouds. <laughs> 93 degrees. We dropped a degree probably because a, a cloud passed over our mm -hmm. thermometer. Any kind of shadow. Yeah. Find it. Uh, because it is getting hot out there. Temperatures are climbing into the 90s in a lot of spots, and the heat index is into the upper 90s, even at this hour. Uh, there's a look at the radar. We have uh, a little bit of uh, rain up there around San Angelo, out in Reagan County. Some uh, thunderstorms producing uh, some good downpours up there, but the question is, will we get any effect here? Will we have some of this energy move south? That's the general idea, but it's going to take probably until the afternoon until... Maybe we see a few thunderstorms up across Val Verde and Edwards counties. You can see some of the cloud cover that has built in around the area. And it does look like there's an outflow boundary there. So we'll see what happens. About a 20% chance of rain if you're in the hill country here in San Antonio. It's probably 20% or less. High temperatures today across the state. 95 here in San Antonio. The heat index will be up in the triple digits. It feels a little bit better out across West Texas. Highs will be in the 90s there. But uh, heat will be on for most of Texas, and there are heat advisories in place around Tyler and as you get into Louisiana. So still very toasty uh, forecast. We'll put in that 20% chance rain again. That's mainly hill country. We're up around 95 today, 92, 7 o'clock, down to 85 by 10 o'clock. And coming up here uh, in just a little bit, we'll have another look at the tropics, which continues to heat up. Guys. Thank you. Another shakeup at the box office this weekend with new releases making waves who nabbed the top spot still ahead in the spotlight. And after being plagued by reports of unsafe working conditions, Amazon says it is working on a plan to address the issues, how it's planning to use robots to help keep workers safe. The need for blood donations remains critical in our community. After the break, why the need is increasing and where you can donate. Today is World Blood Donor Day, and it's dedicated to raising awareness about giving blood and to thank donors for their life-saving gift. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says tomorrow also carries a deeper meaning as our local need for blood is currently outpacing donations. Tiffany Huertas explains the simple ways you can help save lives in your own community. We're at about 1.5 days, a one and a half day supply of blood. Um, and we like to be at at least three days of supply. Adrian Mendoza with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says there are many reasons why blood demand is up. We've seen as much as 20% increase in the need for blood because people are going back into the hospital after having delayed surgeries. And also our community has grown over this last year. While blood donations help patients going through treatments, and those involved in accidents. Mendoza says it's critical during tragedies like the one that happened in Austin this weekend. We had the mass shooting over the weekend in Austin that really concerned us because we are so critical and really not able to effectively meet the needs of the community right now. Mendoza hopes people come out and donate for World Blood Donor Day. You may not know the person who receives the blood you give, but you know you're making an impact and you're giving back to the community and helping someone who truly does need it. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Oh, 
One of the locations you can donate today, William J. Brennan High School. Donations will be accepted from 1 to 6 p.m. To schedule an appointment, call 210-731-5590. Or you can head to southtexasblood.org. We were just talking about yeah. how hot it's going to be for our Fiesta events. Oh. What is Fiesta Fiesta Thursday? Thursday. Get a little warm. Get Porch little, Parade's Friday. We and could then... use a little breeze. Ooh. Need it to be a little breezy. Hey, here's the thing, and this is what I would say. It could be worse. So this idea, you got to look at the positive side of things. It could be 105. That was wow. the uh, temperature back in 1998 this time of year. So that's that. I don't know if it's as humid as it is now, but anyway, uh, 90s so far today. We're going to be up in the mid 90s for highs. We'll be a little bit above average, I think. And uh, the record low. Now that sounds nice. 58 set back in 1903. We'll take a look ahead to the rest of the week and some of those Fiesta plans coming up. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Virgin Orbit is in advanced discussions to go public. That is a $3 billion valuation through a SPAC. The company's in talks on a deal with former Goldman Sachs partner NextGen Acquisition. That's a special purpose acquisition company. Now a deal is expected to be announced in the coming weeks, although Virgin Orbit has yet to confirm. Meanwhile, it won't be Sesame Street Muppets in the Amazon warehouse, but robots. Amazon share details on some of their new warehouse robots that are meant to improve worker safety. Bert, Ernie, Kermit, and Scooter are being deployed to warehouses to reduce incident rates. The company aiming to reduce their incident rate by 50% and plans on investing over $300 million into safety projects later this year. And for the second year in a row, 7-Eleven Day is canceled, but you can still get that free Slurpee. The convenience store will offer a free small Slurpee to all members of their 7 Rewards app throughout July. Since 2002, 7-Eleven has offered free Slurpees to every customer on July the 11th that could celebrate their unofficial birthday. However, the store has canceled that celebration due to the pandemic for the last two years. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. You remember about three weeks ago, the idea was to get from your door to the car without getting rained on. Yeah. Now let's get from your door to the car without sweating to death. I hope everyone's staying hydrated because yeah. this weekend I found Ooh. myself getting like leg cramps from... <laughs> You know, not drinking enough water for this heat. Uh, you're exactly right. It's good information uh, because uh, we were to that point where it does start to get a little bit dangerous, especially during the afternoons. Uh, we've been consistently having that heat index right around 100, and uh, you push it too far, and it, it uh, can get dangerous out there. And we're just getting into summer now, so we've got more of this to come. Outside, you can see we've got uh, partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. 90 degrees at the airport. East southeast really winds at about 7 miles per hour. That, of course, is bringing in... Uh, some nice moisture. Dew points still in the 70s. Uh, temperatures 93 Bernie Stage, 92 Holotus, 94 Pleasanton, 94 in New Braunfels, 89 Uvalde, and 94 out in Del Rio. Uh, numbers getting cranked up pretty quickly here. And dew points, if we're looking for just a little bit of good news here, dew points in the afternoon will be in the 60s. So that's not as bad as it has been. And I think as we get towards the weekend, if we are indeed on the dry side of some of that tropical weather, we should get dew points to come down into the low 60s, so it'll be more of a dry heat, but it'll still be hot. There's no uh, two ways around it. And looking at heat index right now, it feels like 96 outside, feels like 105 in Gonzales, feels like 102 in Pleasanton, 98 Uvalde, it feels like 100 already in Del Rio. Uh, forecast heat indices will be around 100 area-wide. Uh, we're hoping for a little bit of a cool down in the form of some showers. We are seeing those up across uh, I-10. Just get up towards Sonora and Junction, a little complex of showers and storms around San Angelo. There's a little bit of a swirl in the atmosphere, but unfortunately, it's taking more of a south and southwest trajectory, so it's kind of moving away from us. Still, I'm thinking maybe with this outflow boundary, we can get a few showers and storms to develop in the whole country. 20% chance, not a great chance, not going to be severe weather, it's not going to be a lot of rain, but a couple downpours uh, may help to bring temperatures down just a little bit. And there's a little closer look at the radar around Sonora, a few showers 
it does look like we could get some of this activity move into northern Valverde County or maybe northern Edwards County. As for San Antonio, I don't think our odds are that great today. The computer models do show one or two shower storms trying to develop this afternoon. So we'll leave a slight chance in there. I think as we get into tomorrow, our rain chances maybe look a little better. 20% chance of rain probably uh, for the area, and that does include I-35 even off to the east by 5 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a hit or miss type stuff. Now into the tropics. We've been mentioning this most of the day, but rather impressive that we've got now three systems to track out in the Atlantic. One out near Africa, so this has got a lot of real estate to make up. we got a lot of time to watch it, but 20% chance of development according to the Hurricane Center. And then tropical depression number two has developed off the coast of the Carolinas. This will probably become Tropical Storm Bill as it races northeast, but it's going away from land, so this shouldn't be a big deal. And then down into the Gulf of Mexico, this is the area that we want to watch, of course. 60% chance of development according to the Hurricane Center, but this will be a slow process. Still waiting on any sort of center of circulation here. This is real, uh, really rather broad, and uh, it'll take some time before it starts moving north. But the models have been pretty consistent in bringing this north. Uh, this is Tuesday at 5 o'clock, so it sort of sits down here, but uh, by the end of the week, moving north, but keeping a lot of the moisture east. Uh, it depends on how much it develops, and uh, we, again, we still need to get sort of a center of circulation for models to get a better handle on this, but I think that we'll probably stay on the dry side of things. And again, Bill may get named today. If this were to get named, it would be Claudette. And then we follow that with Danny, Elsa, Fred, and Grace in the naming there for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. 20% chance of rain today, tomorrow. 10% chance there on Wednesday, and it looks like things will dry out after that. Father's Day looks hot and dry at this point, guys. Hot and dry. Yeah. Start a fiesta. All right. Bet. A Quiet Place Part 2 set a pandemic error box office milestone this weekend. We're going to take a look at the box office numbers coming up at the spotlight. And a beloved villain in the Marvel Universe is getting his own series on Disney Plus. A preview coming up after the break. This day in Fiesta history is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. If you've been to Fiesta Parade in the past few decades, you've heard it, or maybe even you've yelled it. Show us your shoes! So why is San Antonio fascinated by the footwear of Fiesta royalty? Well, because they have different designs. A lot of them don't wear actual heels. That's right. At some point, a duchess or maybe even a queen decided wearing high heels for hours on a parade float just wasn't going to work. Why not hide tennis shoes under those long, elegant dresses? But somebody gave up their secret and a new tradition began. Showing your shoes! Now when you hear, Show me your shoes! You might see custom boots, bedazzled converse, or even a pair of silly slippers. Before, it was, it was kind of like, don't show them off. But everybody's like, show it to me so we can see what it is. So now they have their own special design and they add their own, you know, touch to it. Leave it to San Antonio to create a tradition out of elegance, comfort, and creativity. That's what they say. It's like, show us the shoes. So we picked it up and we're passing it on to our kids. And real quick, uh, before we continue, we want to let you know that we've been talking about all this heat and humidity that we've been uh, going through over the last couple of days, even the last couple of weeks. ERCOT's now got a message for us. That's right. This just got pushed out to us. ERCOT issuing a conservation alert. Texans are being asked to reduce their power use. We are really hoping this does not yeah. portend uh, that there are going to be any sort of power outages or anything like that associated with the high energy usage that's probably coming because this week it's going to be hot. So once again, check your thermostat right now for that conservation alert from ERCOT. All right. Well, fans await the other kind of fan, like, <laughs> like, like audience fans await the next big screen adventure in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The third small screen MCU story is now unfolding. CNN's Rick Damagella has a look at Loki. He died during Avengers Infinity War, but during Avengers Endgame. You picked up the Tesseract breaking reality. 
I want you to help us fix it. Which leads us straight into the Disney Plus series, Loki. What's interesting about Loki as a show is that we're very familiar with Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of this character. We've seen him in a ton of Marvel movies. And the very first episode, we kind of trace back all of the ways that Loki has threaded through the Avengers and the MCU storylines. And it's an incredibly, uh, you know, revelatory moment. I'm taking you someplace to talk. I don't like to talk, but you do like to lie, which you just did, because we both know you love to talk. One thing that you recognize when you get these longer extended series, I mean, they're not perfect and we can still want more out of these shows, but the fact that we get to live with these characters for so long and kind of see their psychology in a much more fleshed out way is, it, it feels like such a treat. I've really enjoyed WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and so far I'm all in on Loki. Loki, I've studied almost every moment of your entire life. You've literally stabbed people in the back like 50 times. I'd never do it again. Keeping episode two spoilers to myself in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. At the box office this weekend, A Quiet Place Part 2 rebounding back into first place after slipping into second. The film earned $11.6 million. That brings its three-week domestic box office total to $108.9 million, making it the first movie to break the $100 million mark since the pandemic began. In the Heights uh, bowed in at second place on ticket sales of $11.4 million. Peter the Rabbit... Two, The Runaway, bounced to third place with $10.4 million. Kind of shows how much money Hollywood was losing during that pandemic, doesn't it? Well, California kept the movie theaters going. Yeah, made. <laughs> I mean, they were essential services. Keeping it going. There's All right, well, Fiesta kicks off this week, and Father's Day is this weekend. Yes, indeed, and we've cleaned out the spice rack with Adina Anderson because all this that's in your spice cabinet can make what? A uh, rub for steak, grilling, whatever you want. Just start with your brown sugar and start adding all the spices Dad likes. All right, and we're going to show you all that in the show in a few minutes. Yes, indeed, and we're also going to show you what's new out there at the Witty Museum. What's going on, Jen? Or not. Newest exhibits here at the Witty, and it includes big bugs. Back to you.